We have always thought that all Saiyans were warriors. Even Vegeta calls Saiyans a warrior race. But apparently, this is not the case. And not all Saiyans can become warriors. Hey, how's it going? My name is Raf, and welcome to Dragon Ball Code. In the latest interview, Akira Toriyama has revealed specific details about how Saiyan warriors are chosen. It always seemed like all Saiyans became warriors, but apparently this is not true. There is a whole process that goes on when choosing warriors, and everything starts as soon as they're born. Go ahead and hit that like button if you always wanted to be a Saiyan. When a Saiyan is born, the first thing they measure is their battle power. Most Saiyans are born as low class warriors. There, they have two categories in which they can fall upper level warriors or lower level warriors. If when a baby's battle power is measured and they pass a certain standard, they will be classified as an upper level warrior. The baby will be immediately raised as a candidate to become a warrior. And when these Saiyans become warriors, they can be promoted to a higher warrior class depending on how strong they get. But if their battle power is too low and it doesn't reach the standards, they will be classified as lower level warriors. Some of them will become infiltration babies and are sent to other planets. If these babies manage to grow, get strong enough and conquer the planet that they're sent to, they can come back and immediately be recognized as warriors. This is very messed up because infiltration babies do not have a high survival rate. So when these babies are sent on these missions, most of the time they don't make it and obviously they never come back. This is a very unfair system because them or their parents cannot choose what they want to do. It's either this or that. Now the other bunch that gets classified as low level warriors are a bit luckier. They get to stay in their planet and they're trained to become engineers. So these Saiyans are very likely to be in charge of maintaining everything that King Cold's army provides, coming up with new ideas, and building stuff. This makes things a little bit more interesting. If you've read the Dragon Ball Minus manga, you know that the story about Goku going to Earth and take over it doesn't apply anymore. And Goku was in Planet Vegeta for three years. This means that Goku was either going to be sent to a planet later on, or he was meant to become an engineer, which I doubt because Goku is not the smartest, or he actually passed the standards of an upper level warrior and was eventually going to start training, but unfortunately it never happened thanks to Frieza. Another interesting thing that also happens is that apparently depending on how gifted a Saiyan is, they will get special training. Only a select few Saiyan children receive a special training for a short period of time in order to acquire even greater battle power. We know that Raditz was born an upper level warrior in the low class warriors, so perhaps Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta were some of these children that received special training because they were assigned to the same group. First they put Raditz and Nappa together and later on Vegeta was added. And we know that Vegeta was way stronger than both of them, so we can safely assume that Raditz and Nappa had to have been special for Vegeta to be added to that group because Vegeta was in the elite warrior class and let's not forget that he is also the prince. That's how Saiyan warriors were chosen. It seems like Saiyans always had it rough no matter what. So there you have it. And if you like Dragon Ball content, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon with any energy blast that you like so you can get notifications whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.